Um, hello and welcome to episode two of my podcast. This week, <laughs> I'm in a forest, I suppose, which is very pretty here, but it's also 93 degrees, just to get some privacy so I can talk in depth on veganism, animal rights, and animal agriculture. Chance is with me again, my dog. Chance, you keep coming over here every time I say it. <laughs> this episode, I wanted to talk about my connection to animal agriculture, which I think is a lot stronger than most vegans because of where I grew up and the environment that I grew up in. So my story is a little, you know, different than most vegans and animal rights activists because I grew up um, really in this system of animal agriculture. So basically, um, before I was born, my dad was a cow farmer. So I am quite literally the daughter of a animal farmer, which is not something most vegans can say. And it's very strange because he still technically works for the meat industry, maybe even dairy and eggs. I don't even know where all his feed goes to. Anyway, he grows soy and corn to sell to animal farmers. So maybe he sports all three, I don't know. But he creates the feed for animals, which is what this field is that I am currently in, which is all been pretty crazy being, you know, so close to it, but now being morally against it during the past year. I usually think about how crazy this all is when people claim that I've never been to a farm. When non-vegans assume that we as vegans know nothing about animal farming and we're just picking and choosing like the worst farms to show, that always gets me very angry. And they're like, you've never been to a farm. Like, we literally keep cows at our house for the meat industry every other winter, ever since I was a kid, so like 20 years now. So I'm very close and personal with the meat industry, primarily the beef industry, because we have cows living everywhere here. And I don't know, just seeing cows in the field is just like a normal thing. Like every time you leave the house, there's cows everywhere. And I particularly don't even live near a city. Um, Just live out in the country and always have just the same house. And... Now there's like been a rise in factory farms. You can watch my other video, um, Drive With Me As I Ranch About Animal Agriculture, which I will link above. But um, it's just a very normal thing to me. But now there's factory farms that are popping up everywhere. There is a gigantic, very gigantic chicken factory farm going up right by my house, for example. And there's many other pig ones like they dump the dead factory farmed pigs who do not survive long enough because the conditions they are kept in are so horrific in these factory farms they don't survive enough long enough to get to the slaughterhouse so yes they dump their dead bodies in the forest behind my house i'm up close and personal and i can tell you it's not propaganda and animal farming is not humane, and there's no such thing as humane animal products. And then I have some other things like, um, I was in FFA, which is, if you don't know what that stands for, Future Farmers of America. I was in FFA for four years of high school, so basically the entire time I was a high schooler. And we went to numerous um, animal agriculture, you know, and also plant agriculture, which in Nebraska and the American Midwest, plant agriculture really just exists for animal agriculture. So, like, we're known for there being corn everywhere and, like, soy and maybe wheat. And that is mostly all just for cows, pigs, chickens, for meat, dairy, and eggs. And yeah, you think about the environmental impacts and it's just an incredibly inefficient system, but yes, um, that's what it's all for. And I didn't even realize that until like, I was like 17 or something. I thought my dad sold it to humans. Then I realized, oh, it was for animals. 
primarily cows because that's what we have a lot of here. But we actually do have a lot of factory farms which would house chickens and pigs. Which the thing is, I just didn't know they existed um, because they're well hidden. But me as someone who lives near it, I mean, you're not hiding it from me. And for FFA, in order to join it, you had to take a class on agriculture, which again, focused heavily on animal agriculture. And um, I took a test on naming the different cuts of meat from pigs and cows. And I didn't really question it. I was just like, yeah, this is the way things are. You know, um, other animals do it. We've always done it. We need to do it to survive and be healthy and to have strong bones apparently because there was <laughs> the amount of dairy industry propaganda that was at both of my schools growing up just in both cafeterias they had so many um milk ads like saying human children <laughs> need to drink cow breast milk in order to have strong bones and have get calcium like um, just look to the dairy industry if you want to see how incredibly insane it is that we become brainwashed, you know, by these industries and think that we need their products. That's just one of the most insidious ones. That's why, part of why I hate the dairy industry so much. Because it is really the meat industry, but with like years more of suffering and it's just completely insidious that we take away baby cows from their mothers and cause trauma to both just because we want to drink her breast milk instead of the baby. Like you're just stealing a baby animal's breast milk and taking them away from their mother. Sometimes shooting them if they are male and you know cannot be sold to veal or beef. And if they're female they go into the industry that you know their mom was in and they have the same thing happen to them until they are killed. It's just completely insidious and disgusting, morally abhorrent, and yeah, anyway, I was just talking about how just the ads that were cov- it just coated all the walls, like just how insane it is that I bought that, and I just never questioned any of this. So anyway, in um, my ad class, also it was quite disturbing, because he had stuffed um, animals that he had hunted all along the walls, and so if you say like you send me like a meat pick trying to like trigger me it's like bruh <laughs> i ate animals for 19 years i grew up in rural the rural midwest like i have i'm not i'm no stranger to hunting um we have a forest on my farm and we actually let people not me but <laughs> i don't I'm obviously still living with my parents um, until I can support myself somewhere else. But um, yeah, people, my dad lets people hunt deer. And so I've seen dead deer before. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm well versed and nothing's really going to shock me. It's funny how they think it's shocking and they're just trying to troll because they, can act, they can't actually do monk veganism. But um and some other things that happened in that class we watched a documentary on how the different industries worked obviously from the industry's perspective and um i was a sophomore so i was like 15 this is in 2015 and we watched slaughterhouse footage of cows being bolt gunned in the skull and i didn't see that they were suffering so it was like supposedly supposedly you know we, you know Harness would call a humane slaughter, which does not exist. There's no kind way to kill someone who does not want to die for you. And I watched it, and it felt wrong. And I was 15 at the time, 2015. And eating, I ate, like, meat. <laughs> I hate the euphemisms. I hate, I ate maybe even cows, dead animals, for lunch, like, a couple hours later after watching that but when I watched it it didn't feel right in my heart and I was like I am morally against what is happening because I don't want to be needlessly violent to these animals and I think what's happening is extremely wrong I felt that which is how I know it's this compassion it's innate and veganism and animal rights is not 
rocket science. It's very simple, basic ethics. And yes, we've been conditioned to believe otherwise, but innately we all feel the same way if we're good people. And I do believe that. So just that's one instance of proof where, like, I felt it was wrong. But here's the thing. I If I would have followed that line of thought, I would have connected two and two and been like, okay, eating animals is immoral. I should stop. But I quit going down that line of thinking because another thought came to my head and that was nobody else thinks this way. And even if I said, oh, meat- eating animals is wrong. Oh my gosh, there's a moth on my phone. <laughs> Okay, it's gone. Even if I said, like, oh, eating animals is wrong, nobody else would think the same way, and I would just be an outcast, and if I think this but nobody else does, then I must be wrong. That was my line of thought, and I thought, I have to conform, because nobody else thinks this way. It's so weird how that's what I thought, and I was like, okay, I'm just gonna forget this thing that I felt. And I'm going to go back to being completely ignorant and not thinking about the slaughterhouse when I eat animals. I'm not going to think about what the cows endure or what happens to them unjustly. I'm just going to disconnect and just see it as food. And that's what happened. (laughs) And until like four years later when I was 19. Actually, I just turned 19. So I was like 18 when I started questioning things. And it just a bunch of seeds were planted. And all this happened because of the rise of veganism. So my class on agriculture was actually what <laughs> was one of the times I made the connection. So so I did a couple other things. Like we went to certain animal agriculture like events. And so just seeing cows, pigs, chickens in like crates and stuff was just like normal to me and like seeing them in cages because um we would keep like not me but (laughs) we would like keep them in cages and at fairs and events and such and I don't know just didn't question it I thought you know normal natural necessary everyone else does it like all these excuses that you know seem really stupid when brought to light and actually rationally discussed Like, when non-vegans say them, they just seem absolutely absurd, and because they are. But it's just, these are the things that we all innately thought. And why we thought, you know, not being vegan was, like, okay. And, like, the animals, you know, screw them, I guess. Stuff like that. And I actually live on what used to be an animal farm. We have three old barns here that, um, some have hay where, you know, obviously they used to keep the hay to feed different animals to then later kill. And I believe animals are actually slaughtered at my farm, so... And a good number of my neighbors are small, small scale, what, you know, Carnus would call local um, cow farmers, and they have, you know, cows at their house and um, roaming the fields and such, and... You know, <laughs> some people have chickens. Um, some of my relatives have a cow farm, and I used to go over to their house all the time. And um, I have some fond memories from there. So just when people say like, "You've never been to a farm," I I just want to like <laughs> record like where I live and just be like, "Yo, there's literally cows, pigs, chickens everywhere where I live because they are being farmed in important conditions and going to be slaughtered." Brutally and completely needlessly. And um, every single time I leave my house, I see at least one slaughterhouse truck. So I thought it was interesting. Um, someone said, go to like a uh, animal safe vigil because it will change you and you'll like become connected to the animals and you know, be a strong activist, and I thought that was kind of funny because that's what I see every time I leave my house. I do, however, distinctly remember the first time I saw a slaughterhouse truck since going vegan. It was last summer. I was at my job, and I think there was a slaughterhouse somewhere near where I worked, so because there's so many slaughterhouse trucks that went by, and it was a 
not, you know, like a highway or anything. So I knew it was like an off-road that they were taking these animals to not far. And I know because my boss actually used to work in a slaughterhouse um, for like many years. So, um, not my boss anymore. I quit my, I didn't quit my job. I just didn't go back because of COVID and other reasons. So, yeah, I was just like walking back to my truck to like, I don't know, <laughs> get something. And this slaughterhouse truck went by filled with pigs, like pink, beautiful pigs that are, I just, pigs are my favorite animal. And like, I, I don't want I don't want to pick favorites, but Pigs are my favorite animal for like a million reasons and I love them so much and they go through so much hell in animal agriculture, especially on factory farms and farrowing crates and gas chambers. It just fucking outrages me. So the truck went by and I saw the pigs in there and watching slaughterhouse footage, like a lot of it, <laughs> um, I knew what was going to happen to them, like bolt gunned in the skull or have their throats slit, all this, like, Jesus Christ, and I immediately started crying, and I was just bawling, because it is a holocaust, and it fits the definition of holocaust, it's not disrespectful to the Jewish holocaust, or, you know, the World War II holocaust, it's not disrespectful to them to call it a holocaust, too, I'm not putting it on that same level, I'm just saying it fits the word, and it's it's a genocide for no good reason besides profit and sensory pleasure which aren't fucking good reasons to fucking holocaust animals and it was like it hit me you know even though I didn't like come up close to them and like see their faces but I've seen that my whole life so it's like I'm also used to it which is weird but um also, when I would go back to my second second college last year or this year, I don't know what you call it, um, we would see like at least 12 slaughterhouse trucks on the way there and back and tons of factory farms and <sighs> it's just sick, but that's just the reality and it blows my mind that some people can go drive somewhere and not see like slaughterhouse trucks everywhere, factory farms, um, see cows grazing that are gonna fucking get, you know, bolt gunned in the skull for fucking existing because their bodies are seen as objects for profit because we want to eat their bodies for, I don't know, f I don't fucking know why. It's just the system that nobody questions and nobody is brave enough to do the right thing because they're all selfish. And yes, we've been conditioned, but there is a mixture and it's not wrong of me to just say, like, people aren't angels. If all we had to do was educate people and show them um, footage of what happens to animals, standard practice, like, the world would be vegan by now. But that's obviously not the case. <sighs> because it is like an addiction to them. So it's messed up. And then I just, I live on a farm, an animal feed farm. And we keep cows here and it's just sick for me because there's no other vegans. Oh my god, there's a bee on my foot. Um, I have never met another IRL vegan. I actually didn't talk voice to voice with another vegan until right around my first year of vegan anniversary. So it sucks and especially being an animal rights activist who technically does this full time it just really sucks and it's really 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 hard and I can only dream of like having vegan activist friends and like I haven't even gone to a vegan restaurant because there's none around here and just doing IRL activism and having content for YouTube which is what I've been trying to do but COVID and me, you know, and where I live and my parents are just not working out. And I don't know, it's depressing. <laughs> it's depressing, but I just have hope that someday I'm going to get to live all my activist dreams and, like, not be alone. And 
you know, I won't be surrounded by it, which I know it's always going to be in my head, even though I might not be physically surrounded by it as strongly. Like, you're always going to see animal products everywhere and ads everywhere, and non-vegans are going to be surrounding you, and people online are going to be making fun of you, and saying you're not, your activism's ineffective because, you know, vegans are dumb, and you're, you're, you're like, not perfect, your body's not perfect, and telling people that, the, people saying, um, they hope someone punches me, and death threats, it's fun, it'll never completely go away, but it'll just be better. <laughs> If I wasn't constantly surrounded by it, surrounded by it, which quite literally, like every place, like my farm is for animal agriculture, the farm next to it for animal agriculture, the farm next to that, and like my friends growing up had animals at their farms, and it's just like, yeah, and it is weird seeing my relatives who have or still do farm animals. And just being like, yeah. But they just know I'm vegan. They don't really know I'm an activist because I keep that a secret from everybody in my IRL life. I mean, I don't even have an IRL life, but yeah. Honestly, this episode might be a little shorter because I don't really know what else to say. And it's like really hot out here. And my mom's gonna be like, where's Taylor? Um, I don't know. But at least I got some more privacy to be able to make this video and upload it even though my channel... It's better than my other ones, but it's still not <laughs> what I would want it to be. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. That is the biggest fucking wasp I've ever seen. Why are there so many bugs in the middle of a field? Like, Jesus Christ. Crop dust, that's... <laughs> yeah, run over a spider and crop dust, though. Vegans are hypocrites, am I right? Um... <laughs> Which, to that I can say, this field is all going to animal ag. Interesting, that. So the blood is not on vegans for running over a field My, You know, not intentionally, but, you know, they need food to fucking survive. So they bought it from a plant farmer who ran over a field mice, not field mouse, not trying to while harvesting or something. I don't know. Because you cause the least amount, you know vegan and then you need something to eat you know it's kind of important that we're alive and activists because you want to create a world where vegans are doing the farming and these crop deaths will not happen so the best thing literally the best thing for mice because they matter too um is being vegan <laughs> and being active so and I plan on someday, <laughs> hopefully within the next year, living on my own so I can do podcasts where you can see my face what? and where I don't have wind noise in the background. And yeah. <laughs> and there's like so many videos I want to make. And like just sitting down like regular YouTuber videos where I just talk about different um, stuff with veganism, animal rights, and maybe response videos, M maybe more um, cooking videos, like, gosh, there's so much I want to do, but I just can't do any of it, because I'm just censored to shit in my own house, like, literally everything I care about, I can't talk about, and I don't really want to, because they'd kick me out for being different, apparently, and... Because, you know, if you're not a Jesus-loving Trump supporter who eats animals, you know, fuck you, I guess. Also, you gotta be straight and cis. Can't like your own gender. What the heck would you be doing if you liked your own gender? Oh my gosh, the bee is back and he's on my jeans. I'll just let him chill, you know. <laughs> he thinks I'm a flower. I, I should be... That's a compliment. I look like a flower, you know. Oh, well, I was also going to talk about this very interesting 
not interesting. It was kind of really dark. One of the things that um, caused me to make the connection and was another seed planted during my, I don't know how many months <laughs> before I decided to go vegan, just something that happened, which happened because of the rise of veganism and my family making anti-vegan arguments. And I was like, that's dumb. Like <laughs> that doesn't debunk veganism. What the hell are you talking about? And I was siding with vegans because I was like, you know, I don't know, just I'm I'm the kind of person who's going to see it in injustice and be completely outraged by it that <laughs> supporting it's not going to be a thought in my brain. He's on my knee now. Don't know what he's doing, but I'm just trying to vibe. So, okay, buddy. You do you, boo, apparently. What was I saying? I forgot what I was saying. There's a tractor coming. I'm going to hide, question mark. Ow! A bug bit me in the back. Okay, I'm gonna hide. Bye. I'm not here, by the way. Definitely not in a ditch. In in the in a field of soybeans, which, by the way, could be turned into um. Tofu and soy milk, but okay, feed it to cows and then slaughter them, I guess. I don't know what. Um, <laughs> what was I saying? So basically, one of the seeds during this entire time period, which is probably like, it was early 2019, because I decided to go vegan um, mid-April, on it was the night of April 15th, that I was like, nope not gonna support this this is kind of fucked um so i don't know when but during that time period my family and i were like driving on you know driving somewhere and a truck a truck went by i still don't understand why this happened i don't understand what happened to the cows I don't know. But, um, the truck went by and it was, like, um, a truck that has, like, a huge end where you can store stuff. That's literally the most dumb way to describe it, but whatever. Um, and there was, like, 30 dead cows in it. And it was just on the highway and we were driving right alongside it. And I was like, what the fuck? Like... There's all these 30 dead cows. But then my brain was like, okay, yeah, but you eat dead cows. Like, why is it weird? You know? Like, you eat dead cows. You're the reason why they die. You know? Why are you... Why, why would this be weird? And I just saw, like, an injustice. <laughs> like, obviously seeing a pile of, like, 30 to 40 dead bodies. And a, a thought I had in my head was, those are dead bodies. Like, yeah, they're animals, but those are dead bodies. And it just felt so messed up. I was like, this is normalized violence. And I looked around and I saw my family just didn't say a word. And it was normal to them. And it was like so weird because I was like, this is so messed up. Why do I live in a world where this is normal? And everybody else on the road, like, there's no, they don't see anything wrong with this truck of, like, 30 dead cows. And I was just like, what the fuck? Again, I don't know what happened, that they didn't kill them in the slaughterhouse, or that they died. But they were hauling off their dead bodies somewhere. And it was just so weird. I was like... I, it was like I woke up from the Matrix for a second because I was like, this isn't okay. <laughs> okay, the bees trying to get on me. Um, <sighs> I was just like, this is not okay. And everybody's just blind to this besides me. And I just felt like I was, you know, in the Matrix, like looking around, seeing how blind everyone else was and how this was conditioned into us to accept violence. Because they were just animals. Quote, unquote. Anyway, that was one of the things. And again, just... <laughs> the wondrous world of living in the middle of animal agriculture, I guess. 
where we Holocaust sentient beings take away their babies after raping them. And we don't give a fuck if they are traumatized by that. We want their breast milk to sell it and to convince you that you need it when it's bad for your health. Drinking just straight up, like, cheese is absolutely fucking disgusting, too. All dairy products are. But just the idea... Oh, God. The bee went on my hand. Okay. Just the idea of drinking straight up cow's milk is just so disgusting and fucked up. And do these people even see how disgusting that is? Grown-ass adult drinking cow breast milk baby cow growth fluid and nobody ever fucking thinks about the baby cow it's from or it's for they don't even they know it's from a cow which is weird enough like you think that'd be weird enough people like why the fuck are we drinking cow juice that's from a cow tit i don't know but you you stole that breast milk from a baby animal just because you like the taste And just what? It's just the way that the dairy industry never talks about the baby animals. The baby cows, I mean. And I never really thought, oh, what about the baby animals? Or the baby cows? Oh, Jesus fucking Christ, that's a real bee. The other one was a different kind of bee. Ah! I, yo, I don't eat honey. I'm vegan. Can you just move, sir? 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 Oh, Jesus fucking Christ! Ah! Okay. Um, I don't think they're following me, but that was fun. I'm gonna keep walking. So basically, just the propaganda of the dairy industry that they never mention the baby cows. They never mention who the milk is for. Because then people would be like, what the fuck are we doing? (sighs) They never show the baby cows. I never thought about it. I just thought cows naturally made milk. And we took it. Because this was the narrative that I was fed from an early age, like we all were. That you need cow's milk to have calcium and to build strong bones. For some reason. But yeah, you you never think about the victims, do you? You're just supposed to look at the end result and look about look at everybody else doing it too. And yeah, it might be unnecessary, it might be cruel, I don't know. But like fuck it, you know, it tastes good. Apparently. Only not apparently. <laughs> because that's not how shit works. It's not how ethics work. So anyway, yeah, I never really thought, huh, wonder what happens to the baby cows. I never thought about that. Because you're conditioned not to think about it. Did the bee literally, okay, that's, get off me! That's a moth on me. Oh, that's the bee. Oh, are they trying to sting me? The fuck is happening? Okay. I'm scared. Mom, come pick me up. I'm scared. There's a bee trying to sting me. I literally, what did I do to deserve this? Nothing. Nothing. I don't even consume honey like most people do. Bruh. Bruh. Go. Okay. So, yeah, the propaganda never talks about the baby cow. You never think about it. That's why most people have like this weird, okay, they're gone. This weird revelation when you say, why do cows produce milk? And they realize that there's a baby cow involved that the milk is meant for. Like every other species, including our own. I think the bee is on my head. I don't know. I'm trying to walk back. But I'm going to have to cut this off soon, so. Um... Huh? But yeah, cow's milk is for baby cows. Like, what the hell are you doing drinking cow's milk? Eating coagulated boob juice? Get some vegan 
cheese instead what but um yeah that's why people have a weird awakening they're like oh they're like oh at like you know 30 years old they have like this revelation cow's milk is for baby cows that is how good the dairy industry's propaganda is and it's just the system where everybody like change will never happen without individual change the system will never change if we all don't individually change ourselves that's the only way it could change if we think for ourselves and we do the right thing even though we're not going to get something in reward which is hard because a lot of people are fucking selfish and dumb so this is why it's taking so long but oh god Jesus Christ okay But yeah, it's a system that's really conditioned good people into paying for terrible things to happen and good people to slaughter animals and get PTSD and good people to become animal farmers, which I could have been on the road to doing as all my ancestors and dad and grandparents, great grandparents, they all did it. But I don't know, I'm proof the world is changing even though it sucks that I live in such... I live in the direct center of it all, and I can't just close my eyes because there's no other vegans or activists here. There's activist groups, but I I was not able to join because of COVID or, like, do any other events. And I don't know. Just, like, walking on my own driveway, all I see is animal feed that's going to be fed to animals that are enslaved and going to be mutilated, raped, confined, um, have their babies stolen from them, and killed. Okay, the bee is still on me. I'm scared. Okay, bye. I think I'm ending this. Um, This was very interesting. Again, sometime my videos will actually be Glide. Oh, Jesus Christ. It's on my shirt. Bruh, I'm not a flower. I swear to God. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. I think I need to run. Like, seriously, this bee followed me this entire way. I think I need to run. This is scary. Um, yeah. So, anyway, it's not an experience most vegans have. And, um, I feel like I'm forgetting something. I don't know what... I just feel like I am. But yeah, I've grown up around farmed animals everywhere I look. So like for one, I know what I'm talking about. And two, it's really hard. That's all I really have to say, I guess. Thank you for listening. You can follow me on all my things. And I appreciate it because I feel like nobody listens to my long-term content. That takes a little more effort to create, but um, yeah. Also, follow me on TikTok because that's where I'm most active and where I love doing activism the most because it's the most effective in terms of views and how many people I reach. So, thank you and goodbye.